dear students and working accountants welcome to my smart tally brain youtube channel my name is prabhara from hyderabad now we are dealing with gst i mean uh, real estate sector under gst so we already made three videos that is uh, first one i will share the screen see here the first one we dealt with so the real estate transactions or projects are divided into four types first one is we made the video for the one video for the first one in part two video third and fourth we covered so two videos three and four videos we are covering this second part second type of the project so in these three we completed three already this we are doing and in this one so this we clearly we discussed it the, the number one when the builder purchases the land and constructs the flats and sells and sells the flats number three and four number three works contractor there is no purchase or sale of goods sale of land but the land owner will have the land with him himself but the builder will spend the money for the towards the labor as well as the material he will bear the expenses and he will do the construction services only this is called works contractor in the case of labor contractor the builder will not buy the land as well as and the builder will meet only the expenses related to the labor only he will supply the labor only for the construction service material cost also is incurred by the owner only this is about this one the labor contract so for the first one we made a video works contract and labor contract we made the second video and the third video on the third and fourth videos we are covering this the builder and the land owner get into joint development agreement so that the land owner gives the development right to the builder that is he transfers the development right called tdr transfer of development right in that so transfer of development right we started the transfer of development right the system it is given such so tenant is transferring the service so the say so the project under this most of the projects in india mostly this comes under this category so in this case the services are divided into three types that is supply one supply two supply three supply one and supply two we completed already supply one is the land owner use the development right that is use the transfer of development right to the builder builder constructs the flats and he will give the agreed ratio of the flats for example if it is 100 if it is 100 if the one minute if the total construction contract contracted amount is 100 lakhs and the builder will will share in the agreed ratio so for example in this case we take 40 flats to the builder and 60 flats to the 40 flats to the builder and 60 flats to the build sorry 40 flats to the land owner and 60 flats to the builder so the seller builder the land owner will sell his flats and the builder will sell his flats in this case what is the procedure and what is the taxability so in this case if the land owner sells all the flats after completion of the project after completion only completion of the construction only then there is no tax at all but this case whether the land owner sells the flats or not before during construction period or after the construction whatever it may be the on this 40 flats the builder is liable to pay the tax whether he collects the money from the builder the tax from the builder the land owner and pays to the government or pays from his pocket when he how he has to pay the tax on 40 flats it is liability and in this case giving the transferring the right development right is a service and this is regarded as a supply because service is also supply but this transferring the development right service is, that is this supply is treated as exempt under under notification 4 bar 2019 it is exempt so for this service transfer of this development right the landlord land owner need not pay any tax okay and after construction he gives 40 flats to the land owner in this case if the land owner sells 
all the flats after the construction only there is no tax liability at all on his flat on, on him but only the landlord has to pay the tax gst on the 40 flats but in this case if the so first of all this is exempt supply tdr is exempt supply so no gst that's why no registration is also required for the land one and when in this 40 flats if he sells some flats, at least one flat, during the construction period, then he is liable to collect the tax GST from the customer and pay the tax. So then he is liable to collect the tax and pay the tax. That's why when the goods are, I mean, the flats are sold, at least some, during the construction period, he is liable to collect the tax. That's why registration is required. Registration is required for the landowner. In this case, so he has to pay the tax, landowner also has to pay tax, then the tax will be doubled. That is, there will be double taxation. So to avoid the double taxation, I told you already, the builder has to pay the tax, GST on 40 flats, whether collecting from the landowner or from his own, on his own, he pays. So it is to be paid. But in this case, to avoid the double taxation under Notice 13 by 2019, one 13 by 2017, one facility is given. In this case, the land owner, when he sells, for example, he sells 30 flats, each flat at 40 lakhs. So 30 flats he sells during the construction period, 10 flats he sells after the construction. So on the 10 flats sold after the construction, so there is no tax liability at all. On the 30 flats sold during the construction period, so he has to collect the money that is uh, 1% or 5%, 5% or 12% from the customer on the total value, 40, 30 flats sold, 30 flats into 40 lakhs into 1% or 5% or 12%. So you will collect the tax and to avoid double taxation, he will pay the money that is the collected tax to the land one in the development in this builder and the builder will pay the money to the government. In this case, so he is pay, collecting tax, paying to the pay to the landlord, I mean, builder, and the builder is paying. So in this case, double tax, he, is not, he should not pay directly to the government. So he is not paying and paying to the paying the tax through the builder. So the builder will show the liability under B to B in GSTR one with the builders, the landowners GST number and he will show the liability, and in 3B, he will make the payment. So the amount collected from, received from the landowner, he will pay to the government, and this is, he has to show the liability under B2B category. In GSTR 1, the builder will get, that is, the builder will get the ITC in GSTR 2B, because he is paying the landlord, I mean, the builder is paying the tax under B2B with landowners, GST number, so landowner will get the ITC. So landowner will show the liability in GST one, the amount collected from the collected from the customers under B2B or B2C because if the customer is not registered, he will show under B2C. If the customer is registered, he will show under B2B. Or some of the customers may be registered, some of the customers may not be registered. So under B2B or B2C, he will show the liability under GST one, the amount collected from the customers on sale of 30 lakhs. That is 40 lakhs into 30 lakhs into 1% or 2 percent, 5% or 12 percent. And he will show the liability under B2B or B2C in GSTR1. And in GSTR2B, he is getting the ITC from the land I mean, builder of aid with his registration number under GSTR1, showing the liability. He will get the ITC. So from the liability, he will show the ITC minus ITC. The same amount he will get as ITC. So his liability will be in. Only the builder is paying. So the double taxation is avoided. It's okay. In this case, and this I will completed this. And then, okay. And he pay, he sold the balance 10 flats after the construction. So there is no tax liability. So this is completed. But here, so his liability is okay. Over. That if that's he collected the money from the customer, that is the tax, and paid to the builder. Builder showed the liability with the landowner's GST number, and the landowner 
So liability he set up against the GST, I mean, the ITC is received from the builder. This way, his job is closed. Now here, he is liable to pay the GST on 40 flats given to the landlord. Okay, so out of this, so actually after completion of the construction, he has to pay. But here, you get the, because since this landlord sold during construction and to get the ITC there, so he paid to the, the tax to the land, I mean, developer or the builder. Uh, he's also called developer or builder or in the tag or not in the shown as promoter also. So he's 30 land, that for the 30 plans, he paid to reconstruction itself. He has to pay. He paid to reconstruction itself. So there is balance 10 plans. So balance 10 plans, he has to pay that tax. 30 plans paid by collecting the money from the land owner. For the 10 plans, he has to pay from his pocket because he's not selling to anyone. So in this case, for this 10 flats, balance 10 flats, he will show the liability and the B to C. Because he's not selling to anyone, he's not collecting money from anyone. So for the 10 flats, he's showing the liability in GSTR 1 under B to C and in B to 3, he will pay the liability. So for 30 flats, collected from the land owner will pay. Okay, his liability. And balance 10 flats, he is paying from his own. So only for 10 flats, he is paying the liability in cash is paying to the government. So in these two cases, come to that. Now, so this one, and this 10 flats balance is showing the liability under B2C and paying the money that I think it is not covered in the previous video. So that is covered. So these two cases, supply one and supply two, completed. In supply one, there is still balance is there. It comes under supply three, okay. And now we come to supply three. So in supply three means the builder, he got 60 flats as his share. So from his share, he may sell after completion, sell all the flats after completion, or he may sell all or few, some of them during construction period. For example, if he sells all the 60 flats during construction, he is liable to pay the tax. He will pay the tax, he will come to it. So he will pay to the government, he will pay the tax. And there will be no flats left after that construction. Suppose, if he sells only 45 plants during the construction and 15 plants after completion of the construction, in this case, so the builder is the supplier, he has to pay the tax and the customer is the recipient. He will collect from the customer and pay to the government. In this case, during construction, 45 flats are sold. In this case, GST is payable. GST is payable by the builder, but he will collect from the customer. So here, he will pay tax at the rate of 12% or 14% or 1% or 5% depending on the comes building. Okay. And in this case, if it is 12%, you'll get ITC. If it is 1% or 5%, you will not get any ITC. ITC means not, not getting the ITC from this amount, from 12% or only. If it is paid at the trade, tax is paid under the trade. So he will get ITC of the expenses he paid. So he meant he for construction. He paid labor expense services, sorry, inputs means input goods, cement, steel, brakes, etc. Inputs are input services, labor for construction, I mean, uh, electrician, plumber, everything, all this labor. So, labor and material, he paid a lot of money. For that money, he paid tax. So, that tax, he can claim ITC, not this 12% of it. If the tax is paid, get these rates, he can get the ITC for these expenses. Okay. So if it is 5% or 1%, there is no ITC. If it is 12%, he will get ITC. So there is no problem for this 45 plants. And then 15 plants are left over. So if the 15 plants are sold after the construction, after the construction, so at the time of sale, there is no GST anyone. Even builder also, the landlord also, if the his share out of 40, 30 sold during construction, 10 are left over. These 10 are sold after construction, there is no tax. Here also for 15, there is no tax. But the 15 are left over after the construction. After some time, he may sell. But before that, complete after completion of the construction, there are some flats left over, unsold flats. Unsold flats. So if there are some unsold flats, in that case, for these unsold flats, see here, here. 
upon completion, this is sold after some time, so there is no STT. But if the, the some flats are left over of construction, in such a case, go to the first one. In such a case, for the last two left over, it immediately after construction, sold after some time, so then there is no tax. But immediately after construction, completion of the construction, on the left left over flats, for these flats, the TDR, CDR is exempted. So TDR is exempted because it the assumption that all the 100 flats will be sold during construction or immediately after construction is set. In this case, if the, the, they are unlapped and left over some flats, so the TDR service value, what is the service value? The stamp duty value anywhere, stamp duty value of the flats. So stamp duty of the flats is the value taken every time to calculate. So TDR value also, the stamp duty of that value, stamp duty of the flats. So on the left over flats, on the stamp duty, the tax is payable because they are not sold, they are left over. So the assumption is all the flats under will be sold, but here 15 are left over, they will be sold after some time. Okay, that's what, at the time of sale, no tax. Before that, after completion, this is, who has to pay this? Okay, so on the TDR, that is the development rate of the 15 left over flats, the tax is payable. Here the problem is, who has to pay? The TDR is sub given by the land owner to the builder. So land owner is the supplier. Actually, supplier has to pay. Builder is the recipient. But in this case, in this case, this TDR value on the left over flats is to be paid by the recipient under under charge, reverse charge mechanism. Generally, the supplier will pay the tax from by collecting from the customer. But Reverse charge mechanism means the recipient will pay the tax. The recipient will pay the tax directly to the government. But in this case, for the 15 flats, the builder is liable. The builder is liable to pay the tax GST on the TDR. That is GST on the development price. Here you see, see here. It is to be paid under reverse charge mechanism because he is the supplier, he has to pay. But here, under under reverse charge mechanism. Builder has to pay upon completion of CM1 TDR of unsold flats. Refer to one here. In this case, up to this over. Now, what if there are unsold flats lying with the builder, lying with the builder after the issuance of clearance of completion certificate? So after completing that, they will give the authority, will give proper authority. After giving the issue of the completion certificate, then the GST is payable on the stamp duty value of the unsold flats. Stamp duty value is registered value. Registration value of the unsold flats lying with the builder into insert rate, 5% up to 1%, but there is no 12%. For the 12%, it is to be taken as 18, only at this place. That is for the, the TDR. That is the TDR value, the TDR value, uh, value of the unsold flats. In this case only, for the reverse charge mechanism, payment on the reverse charge mechanism by the builder, the commercial part will be taken as 18%, not 12%, only one place, 1%. And the tax is to be paid at this rate on the stamp duty value of the unsold flats is to be payable by the builder under RCM. Here you see, under RCM means, under RCM, see here, this is, under RCM, here, unsold flats. Under RCM, here, under section 9.3, section 9.3, this, this is reverse charge mechanism. Under this, some services or goods are given. We already know. So, GTA, freight, legal services, and then security services, and lending of uh, immovable property by the government, renting of motor vehicles by the government, by anybody to that, to any company, other than a body corporate, renting to the vehicles to a body corporate like this. In this, number nine, transfer of development rights. Transfer of development rights. And the transfer of development rights by the landlord to the promoter of the builder, tax is to be paid under reverse charge mechanism. Under reverse charge mechanism. Reverse charge mechanism means here, 
Reverse charge mechanism means here the builder has to pay, but here it is given sort of the development rights. However, the taxability is restricted to unsold flats by the held by the promoter upon completion of construction. After completing the construction, only the taxability is restricted to unsold flats only here. So that's why only on the unsold flats, only on the unsold flats as per the value, the stamp duty value of the unsold flats into the concern rate, but for commercial it is 18%. It is to be paid by the builder under reverse charge mechanism. Under reverse charge mechanism. And here also in this case, if the rate is 1% or 5%, there is no, we cannot get any, if the tax is paid with, under with, here this rates, 5% or 1%, the builder will not get any ITC for the 15 flats. And if the taxability is 18%, in such a case, he will get full ITC for the expenses he paid. That is the tax he paid, he can get ITC on the 15 flats also. In the 45 flats, if it is 12%, he will get ITC. If it is 5 or 1, he will not get ITC. In this case also, 1 or 5 will not get ITC. If it is 18%, he will get ITC for the flats which are remaining. So in this case, this is the thing. If the builder is paid completely the land wall restricts everything sold after construction, there will be no tax liability at all. So as a whole, if we take tax is to be paid by the builder on all the flats, on 100 flats. So 40 flats is here, the 60 is here. So for out of 40, 30, he is selling, paying to him, and he is paying the money. And balance 10, he sold after construction, so there is no tax for him. And here, a balance 10, he is paying under, same thing, he is paying as B2C. He is paying. So 30 collected from him and paid. Then paying from his project. And in this case, 45 sold during construction, tax is collected from the customer and paid to government. For the 15, after sales, there is no tax. But after completion of the construction, on the 15 flags, on the 15 flags, he is paying the tax under the merchant. So 30 is paying, collecting from him. Then paying on his pocket, 40 and 45 he sold during construction, tax is collected and paid. So 40 plus 40, 85. For the 15 un unsold flats, even though he sold after some time, then that time he will not pay. On this unsold flats, after completion, he is paying the tax under the charge. So for all the 100 flats, tax is paid by the builder. Only for 30 flats, he is collecting from the landlord. Here he is collecting the customer, and in these two cases, he is collecting for 30 flats from the collecting from land owner and 40 flats later collecting from customers. And this 10 paying from his pocket, 15 he is paying from his pocket on rental charge. Okay. So in this case, the builder will not get except this 18% or 12%, he will get the river charge. I mean uh, ITC. In all other cases, he will not get ITC. So in this case, the builders can keep on to. So that I mean, the material and the labor purchase from may purchase, then the ITC, we are not getting the ITC, you're not eligible for ITC. So in this case, we may think if you purchase from unregistered dealer, so unregistered dealer, there will be no tax if the if you are unregistered dealer, he cannot tax collect any tax from the seller or from the recipient or buyer. He's unregistered, so he cannot collect the tax. So if you buy from the unregistered dealer, we need not pay any tax. So if you don't get any ITC, so we are not paying any tax. So there is no problem if you don't get the ITC. So the persons, they may think that, they may think that for that, the government placed some other restriction. This is one thing is only, there are four restrictions. First of all, two and additional restrictions. This already we discussed. Promoter of the builder is liable to pay GST on construction of houses, land owner share. Landlord share also is paying the tax. And upon completion, PDR on unsold portion of the portion is liable to GHA or RCM. He is paying for the left over 15 tax. These two we discussed. In this case, input tax shall not be available. So input tax credit is not available to the builder except for the commercial for portion, commercial building 12%. He is eligible for the ITC. In all other cases, 
he is not eligible for ITC. Input tax rate is not available. And the second one, so to avoid the this plan by the builders, collect, I mean purchasing from the totally purchasing the material of labor from unlisted dealers. So they placed one thing. When they are purchasing from the material or labor from dealers, so at least 80% of the total the purchases, total supplies, that is the purchasing supply, that is labor supply, labor charges, I mean inputs or input, inputs and input services. I told you inputs means material like uh, steel, cement, etc. So material that is called inputs and input services like labor charges, but labor means construction labor as well as uh, plumbers, electrician, all the types of persons. So in this case, at least 80% of the total supplies, supplies means inputs and input services, at least 80%, but 80 percent should be purchased from registered persons only. That means only 20% can be purchased from unregistered persons. So we cannot purchase all the supplies from unregistered person. At least 80% should be purchased from unregistered registered persons only. And if the 80% is not purchased, the short form, if you purchase for an S percentage, for example, we purchase only 70% from the registered persons. Registered persons, in that case, the short form is 10%. So short form of four, from 80%, it is 10 suppose If you purchase 60% only, 20% is the short form. If you purchase 70%, 10% is the short form. If you purchase 75% from the registered persons, the short form is 5%. So for the short fall, he has to pay the he has to pay tax under RCM because if you purchase, you will pay to the supplier. That is, you will pay to the supplier, registered person, and the registered person will pay to the government. Okay, you will get for rebate. I mean, our ITC only are 18 for 12 percent class only, not for others. But in this case, he has to pay tax, not pay unregistered persons you are purchasing. In such case, we won't pay any tax. So if it is the uh, not 80 percent, if you purchase less percentage, the for the short fall, we have to pay tax. Not paying to the person, we have to pay direct to the government under RCM at the rate of 18 percent. At the rate of 18 percent. So whatever the flats we use the material, immaterial, 18 percent you have to pay under RCM for the short fall, not for the whole. So if you purchase 70 percent from each persons, you pay tax. For the 10 percent, you have not paid. For the 10 30 percent actually 20 percent is okay allowed and the 10 percent shortfall we have to pay rate we have to pay tax under rcm yet 18 percent if there is cement also in the case of cement the rate is 28 percent it is to be paid for this rcm i actually without itc we will not get itc because we are purchasing from unregistered so this is the problem so we cannot purchase from the list unregistered person also up to 80 percent you have to purchase from the regional persons only 20 percent allowed from the unregistered person then is okay then is okay otherwise if it is a short call for the short call we have to pay tax on the rcm at 18 percent if the semi in the case of semen we have to pay 28 percent this is about the this is about the construction i mean uh, real estate sector this is about the builder not for purchasing from others, we have to purchase to avoid that. Builders will think they will plan. We'll purchase totally from unregistered persons, there's no tax. So we will not get any ITC, there's no problem. But here, to avoid that situation, the government has placed this restriction. Okay. This is about the totally about the real estate sector. First one, real estate sector. So in this this is the second video in this. So first video with Second video covers these two. The third video covers half of this. First two supplies. First one or two supplies is covered in video three. Now the third this video is covered about the supply three and the TDR unsold flats also. Okay, and about the percentage of percentages to be purchased from registered dealer to avoid the dealers the builder purchasing completely from unregistered dealer. And here. There is one small 
from small to reduce the tax. We cannot avoid the tax. We cannot avoid evade the tax. We have to follow the rules. But by planning, we can reduce the tax. So in this case, so this is the thing the government has initiated to avoid the purchase from other states. But yes, the government is reducing the tax. So not paying any tax, even if you don't get the IPC, is not a problem for the government. But here, in this case, by planning the tax planning, we can reduce our burden tax rate. We are not getting RT, RCM, but paying the tax is a burden. So the tax we can reduce, so that our loss will be less. That is, if you purchase from registered dealer, you have to pay tax. If you purchase from unregistered dealer, there will be no tax. So here, if you, in the case of registered dealer, if you purchase, we are paying tax, not getting RTC, ITC for 511% residential class. So that is a loss. But for 12% we get. But in this case, if you purchase from unregistered dealer, not paying any tax, not getting any ITC. So there is no problem for us. No, it's not any loss. But in this case, to avoid all this, for this, the government place some restrictions. By following the restrictions, you can make one thing. The given thing is 80% of the inputs and input services used in supplying the service, that is supplying the construction service, shall be purchased from registered person. So from registered person only we have to buy. So in the registered person, there are two types. Regular and composition. Regular persons means they will collect the tax and they will pay to the government. So we have to pay tax. If you purchase from regular persons, we have to pay tax. But they are not getting ITC. But if you purchase from purchase from composition deal, composition is of the registered. Registered means regular composition. Both are registered. So if you purchase from registered deal in uh, registered dealers only, but these not regular. If you purchase from composition dealers, the composition dealers also cannot collect anything on the sales. That means when you are purchasing, we need not pay any tax. Okay, we need not pay. Any tax. So there is no tax, but in the, in the case of uh, composition dealer, the composition dealer will pay tax to government from his pocket. So when you are purchasing large quantities from a composition dealer, he has to pay from his pocket to a button team. So by agreement with them, the dealers, the builders, they can pay the tax paid by them from their pocket. This builder also can pay by a their agreement, mutual understanding, he can pay. In the case of a person, the person we could have We are purchasing from material also we are purchasing from dealers. And also we are purchasing labor charge, labor also we are purchasing. There is also goods and services, inputs and input services. So for input services and labor, labor, the rate is 6% paid to the paid to government by the composite dealer. In the case of trader, he has to pay 1%. So when you purchase material, so we can pay 1% only to the dealer. He will pay, that is just like paying from his pocket. We can pay to them, not in the bill. In, in the bill, there will be no tax. So additionally, we pay 1% only. And for services, up to 60, I mean, up to 50 lakhs, the service providers can give the services under the composition scheme at the rate of 6% only. He has to pay the tax to government. For every service, in other cases, regular cases, will be 18% for any service. But in this case, composition scheme, the rate is only 6%. So we can pay, we can get the input services also from a composition dealer up to 50 lakhs, up to 50 lakhs, and we can pay only 6%. So 1% for inputs and 6% for input services. So we can save a lot of, because we are not getting back. We are not getting back for 12% only, for 12% tax rate only, we are getting the ITC. So, except commercial building, we can get ITC, that's okay. For others, we will not get. So, if we pay less tax, so our burden will be even if we don't get the ITC, our burden will be less. This is the small tax planning by the builders. So, by following this tax planning, he can reduce the tax burden, even though he's not getting the ITC, his tax burden, by, instead of paying 18%, or anything, he is paying only 1% for inputs and 6% for services. He is paying and he is reducing, even though he is not getting there. So, this is about the total real estate. There are only four parts I can tell you. Every video you follow, total video from the beginning to the end, then only you can understand, particularly under the third type, 
the third video that is third and fourth videos under the joint development agreement. These are very confusing. The calculations and all these things are very confusing. So all the videos, including these, you go through many times, then only you can understand the real estate sector here. And here I told you, here, in this case, these are the development, right? And the last thing is, I told you in the last time, and RCM has to pay because I told you unregistered persons, registered persons, this applies to under section 9 4, he has to pay the tax. That is from unregistered person, the recipient is registered. To purchase from unregistered persons, in that case, we have to pay under RCM. Okay. So this is about the real estate sector. So go through well, go through well and watch every video many times. Then you can answer it because it is a confusing topic disease. You can get very good knowledge. Okay. And you follow the videos fully. And just if the videos are good, you just like them. And every person visiting my channel, please subscribe to my channel and share with others. Hit the bell icon and click select all. You will get notification for all the videos which I upload. And I am conducting online classes also. If anyone interested, can call me and uh, yeah, in the online classes. My mobile number is given on the thumbnail. Thank you and wish you all the best. And thank you very much. So we'll meet in the next video. Thank you.